In this video, we're going to be looking at do's and don'ts in a fish pond management. And this is going to be based on our experiences from the farm. I'm going to be giving you practical examples with pictures and I'll also take you along to the pond so that you see how exactly we do some of the things and how we sometimes don't. Hi everyone, this is Naturally Afrosis welcoming you to Fuse Farm. I know this video has taken long to come, it should have come around last week life happened but anyway we have to pick up the pace so please stay until the end I'm going to be giving you dates for the fish farming training being offered by the people that trained me that's breathing fish farm and I'll also give you the contacts the online training the two practicals for owners of farms because you also need information and there's also the more practical one for workers I'll also be giving you some of the accessories and tools that you need for your day-to-day -day management of the pawns. I deliberately never talked about them in the beginning but you need to be able to choose which ones I must and which ones you can get later on. So before we go into anything make sure you click subscribe and turn on your notification button so that you don't miss any videos that I do. Let's get into it. Number one water quality management. We want to make sure that we look at um, the best condition for our fish to flourish. In this case, we're looking at uh, tilapia. But before we delve into it, I want us to look at what we do before we even go into looking at the other conditions. So we make sure that we fertilize our ponds before we stock. So in this picture, I hope you're able to see the bags. You can either fertilize using synthetic fertilizer or you can use organic manure we use chicken manure we make sure we bag it and throw the bags in the water if you want to know the details of how we fertilize and stock i've already done a video on that i'll link it at the end of this video so we fertilize our pond until the water is light green so when we see that the water is ready then we go ahead and stock so now let's look at the conditions that the fish will flourish for better growth. So you need to make sure that you check that the temperatures are between 20 to 30 degrees celsius anything below that or above that is not good for your fish that is why it's not advisable for you to do your stocking in the cold season like this time around in june because the temperatures are not good and therefore the fish has less appetite to eat so it means that it will not be able to eat and it will be more stressed and your fish will not grow very well so avoid stocking in the cold season now i know when starting it's very tempting you want to just go for it and do your stocking but you have to exercise patience like right now at fuse farm we have three lined ponds that we needed to restock but we are not going to be able to restock because we delayed and we're caught up in this cold season so for the temperature you need to use a thermometer so we do have a thermometer and we do check the temperatures from time to time and then we look at uh, oxygen so there is uh, a gadget that you need to use for checking the dissolved oxygen in the water but we've never bought that equipment it's very important we will be able to discuss them at the end of the video then you also need to make sure that your ph is between six nine the range as you can see you will find that your fish is very active and swimming around and very happy the other thing is you need to make sure your water is clean and clear so meaning you need to make sure that uh, the turbidity is low there are methods that you can use to check your turbidity like maybe dipping your hand up to your elbow and see the movements of your your fingers but by observation you can just see and usually when the turbidity is high you find that the fish suffocates and it eventually dies and when you check the gills you find that there's a lot of debris in the gills like last year i did a video of how we lost 72 fish it was because our water was not very clear 
all these four elements there are specific gadgets that you can use to manage them but you see when you are just starting as a newbie the startup costs are so high and you cannot afford to buy all these things some of them are expensive but you can still start your fish farming without these things so i will tell you that from the way we started our fish farming we only had a thermometer number two oxygenate your ponds we make sure that we oxygenate our ponds by adding fresh water and when we add the fresh water we put our pipes up so that the water drops at an angle and as it drops it picks up the oxygen as it falls into the pond do not let your water run down like in this picture but let it run at an angle so that it picks up oxygen as it falls into the pond the other thing that we do is to make sure that we aerate our ponds we use the aerators they're not enough so what we do is the morning part we put in the other ponds and then the other times we put in the other so they do share so this is how we make sure our water gets oxygenated and as we are adding some water some of it is going out so there is that movement that is being created so you are assured that there will be some oxygen coming in number three make sure you sample weigh your fish sampling your fish will allow you to determine the average body weight of your fish the average body weight would determine the amount of feed that you need based on the feeding charts which is provided by the feed company you are using or the feed type you are using so you need to make sure you know your average body weight for your fish for you to be able to know the right quantities to feed so that you avoid overfeeding your fish and the pond because that will compromise the quality of your water so sample weighing will help you know your feed rations number four do not neglect your pond liners don't allow your pond liners to go to waste like this when you see there's a cut or a tear before the grass even starts growing in it make sure you mend it because if you don't mend it and leave it for a long time like that the more the grass grows the more the tears become too big and it's going to be a lot of work for you to start joining and also might be costly because you're going to need more pond liners and more glue to mend them so with us with this one we ended up calling someone to come and use a gun because the area was too long for us to mend with just glue so what you need to do is to make sure once you just harvest your fish you clean your pond lime it clean it and put water because these pond liners we use 250 microns and uh, the 250 microns we bought are not uv treated so they are also easily damaged by the sun number five is security you need to secure your ponds make sure you fence them off especially if you have children you don't want accidents and also you don't want intruders provide extra security by getting dogs or a guard because you will have uh, thieves visiting you we were once visited by thieves pumps were stolen controllers were stolen and solar panels were also stolen despite being secured never been a fan of dogs but we had to have dogs to just increase our security i know it's an added cost but you just have to do it number six ensure your surroundings are clean do not allow the area around your ponds to have overgrown grasses. Otherwise, you're going to have intruders, snakes, frogs, and all the other things that are not nice for your fish. I've been finding these snakes in the ponds, but I'm told they are friendly snakes. But to me, a snake is a snake. So the surroundings just have to be clean to avoid tripping. You want to make sure where you're passing, it's nice, clean, and clear. If there's a ditch, if there's a stone, you should be able to see it make sure that the grasses and the debris on top of your ponds are scooped out because if they sink to the bottom they will decompose and also contribute to the poisonous situation in your ponds which might kill your fish so make sure your surroundings are super clean if anything make them cute make them look like they are part of your landscaping so that you enjoy the view and everything they come with Number seven, do not allow frogs to grow in your pond. Otherwise, they are going to be competing for feed with your fish. Deal with them. When they are still tadpoles, you will see them floating 
in thousands like a boar. So you just scoop them out, they will not survive on the ground. And that's how you deal with the frogs the easier way. Number eight, feed correctly. Like I said earlier, you need to make sure that you feed your fish correctly. Make sure when you're feeding, the temperatures are right, the weather conditions are okay, and your fish is active and has appetite. So you will feed according to your feed rations, assuming you do your sampling and then you calculate your quantities of feed that you're supposed to feed. So as you feed, you make sure you observe your fish when you see that your fish is now satisfied you stop don't overfeed your fish you risk bloating and eventually death you also risk overfeeding the pond one your feed is expensive for you to just waste it and two you find your feed will just be wasted in the pond it will float for some time and eventually be blown by the wind to the direction where the wind is uh, blowing and then eventually it will sink to the bottom and start decomposing and making your pond poisonous for your fish so there's no reason for you to overfeed the, the, the fish it won't grow any faster instead it will do your fish harm Number nine, store your feed in a cool, dry place. Avoid keeping your feed in the same place where you keep chemicals like pesticides and whatnot. You might end up poisoning your fish and your pond. Number 10, make sure you drain your ponds from the bottom from time to time. This will allow you to release the toxins, debris that would have formed from the fish poop and the decomposition of any other matter that would have sunk to the bottom, including the feed and whatnot. Now we move to our tools and accessories. So here are some ammonia, pH, the dissolved oxygen, meter, just to mention but a few. You also have chest wadding pants. We just call them rubber suits. Then we also have weighing scales and a variety of erectors. Depending on the type of power source you have, if you have electricity, you are using a genset, some of them will work for you. But for us, we got small ones, the fountain-like ones. They work with solar since we don't have electricity. Then you also need some harpa nets. These come in handy when there's a problem in one pond. You want to remove some fish, take it in another pond, and you just want to use it as a holding area so you put your fish in a harper and then when the pond is sorted out you put the fish back obviously you want to know where to get some of them most of these accessories the ones that we have at least we got from iban aquafish they are found in uh, showgrounds the numbers on the screen i'll also link their numbers in the description down below and by the way that's where we also get our fingerlings from you might wish to try iban aquafish they have not disappointed us. A lot of people have complained that they get non-sex reversed fingerlings which are poor quality elsewhere. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please share with your friends and give it a thumbs up. Make sure you click subscribe, turn on your notification button. Thank you very much for watching and bye. See you in the next one.